In this tutorial, I will explain what a Moxon antenna is and how to build one. The antennas built in this tutorial are intended for test and educational purpose and should be used indoors. The antennas are constructed in such a way so it can be easily disassembled and its parts can be reused in other antenna projects. The antennas are not properly constructed and the antenna performance can be improved by using better materials, parts, or another way of construction. The Moxon antenna is a simple and mechanically robust two-element parasitic array antenna created by amateur radio operator Les Moxon. This directional antenna is equivalent to a two-element Yagi Uda antenna. It has a reflector, as you can see over here, and a driven element, as you can see over here, but no directors. The two elements are mechanically connected by two insulators, as you can see over here. And the feed point is here. The antenna has a large beam width and a very good front to back ratio. More information about beam width and front to back ratio, see tutorial 39. To find the Moxon antenna dimensions, you can use the following calculators. An online calculator, see this link or you can install a Windows program. You can download it from this link. I have tried both calculators and in my situation, they both generate the same results. This is the result generated by the Windows program from this site. I've entered a frequency of 868 MHz and a wire diameter of 1.8 mm, and it generates these antenna dimensions, A, B, C, D, and E. A, B, C, D, and E can be found in this picture. This is the feed point, this is the driven element, and this is the reflector. You can find the same results in this slide. Here is the driven element, and here is the reflector, and here is the feed point. Please note the signal direction is this direction. Also note, keep the feed point gap as small as possible. I have used the 4NEC2 antenna modeling software to verify the design. The 4NEC2 card deck can be found at this location. Based on this drawing and these antenna parameters, I have modeled my Moxon antenna in the 4NEC2 program. My wire diameter is 1.8 mm and the wire material is stainless steel. The antenna altitude is 1 meter. This is the modeled Moxon antenna in the 4NEC2 program. This is the feed point and this is the reflector, which means the signal direction is this direction. I'm using perfect ground, which means perfectly conducting ground. The phase war is 1.38. This is the corresponding radiation pattern in a vertical plane and horizontal plane. And the maximum gain in the vertical plane is 11.8 dBi at an elevation angle of 90 degrees, as you can see over here. The same radiation patterns, but now in 3D. I have changed the ground. The ground is set to real ground and the ground type is city industrial area. The height is still 1 meter above ground. The visuar is still 1.38. Again, the radiation pattern in a vertical plane and horizontal plane. And the maximum gain in the vertical plane is 10.3 dBi at an elevation angle of 85 degrees, as you can see over here. Again, the corresponding radiation patterns in 3D. I've now changed the height to 10 meters above ground while keeping the same ground and ground type. The visuar is still 1.38. This is the corresponding radiation pattern in a vertical and horizontal plane. And as you can see, the maximum gain is now 5.26 dBi at an elevation angle of 65 degrees, as you can see over here. I have now changed the height to 40 meters above ground with the same ground and ground type. 
the fifth bar is still 1.38. This is the corresponding radiation pattern in the vertical plane and horizontal plane. And as you can see now, the maximum gain is 5.79 dBi in the vertical plane at an elevation angle of 80 degrees. That is here. Based on the 4 NEC2 antenna design, I have built the Moxon antenna. To build a Moxon antenna, I need a Type N female chassis mount 4 hole connector, as you can see over here. The driven element and the reflector can be made from copper wires, for example, these electrical wires. These wires have a diameter of 1.8 mm. The electrical insulator can be easily removed using a Stanley knife. Instead of copper wires, I use umbrella wires, which are made from stainless steel, which also have a diameter of 1.8 mm. With these umbrella wires, I made the reflector and driven element. I need a terminal strip block. I only need one terminal with corresponding two screws. Cut the screws in half, as you can see in this picture, so they will not stick out too much. This is already explained in tutorial 44. In this picture, you see that this terminal does not fit the center conductor. You need to enlarge the hole of this terminal. How to do this is explained in tutorial 44. You need an RF coaxial cable RG316. The length is 20 cm with type N male plug right angle to SMA male connector. You need a screw M3 by 8. The outer diameter is 3 mm and the length is 8 mm. A metal washer and the corresponding nut M3. You also need a plastic pen ink reservoir, as you can see here. This plastic tube has an outer diameter of 3 mm and an inner diameter of 1.9 mm. Cut two pieces and each has a length of 30 mm. This plastic tube is called the insulator, which will be used to mechanically connect the reflector element with the driven element. Here is the Type N female chassis mount 4-hole connector, the corresponding screw washer nut, and corresponding terminal, which enlarge hole and the screws are shortened. Bend the wires in these shapes using pliers. Here you see the driven element and the reflector. The same driven element and reflector with corresponding dimensions. The units are all in millimeters. Here you can see the two insulators. Attach both driven elements to the type N connector. One is attached using a terminal and the other using the nut and screw. Make the feed point gap size 1 mm. I have made this height 17 mm. Do not make the height too large. And again, make sure that this screw does not touch the ground, as you can see over here. Here's an overview. Here's the different element, the insulator, the reflector, and again the insulator. As you can see, there's a gap over here. This is the bottom view, and here is the side view, and here is the metal washer. I made this gap according to the design, which is 3.43 mm. I have applied glue here and here inside the tube. For the glue, I'm using Bison Kit Universal Contact Glue. However, this is not a good glue. It does not glue to metal. If you want better attachment, use a glue gun. This is the Moxon antenna, the driven element, the reflector, and the two insulators. Make sure there is a gap of 1 mm. Make sure that this screw does not touch the ground. As you can see, there's a gap over here.
and the same gap size over here. A lessons learned, instead of this shape, bend this wire like this. The Moxon antenna in my test rig, the front view, and here's the back view. In this picture, you can see that I created a loop in the wire, so it can be easily attached to the type N female connector. And here you can see the gap of one millimeter. And here's another picture of the Moxon antenna in my test rig. The antenna analyzer with the Moxon antenna measuring the antenna parameters. These are the measured antenna parameters. The face war is approximately 1.1, the impedance is approximately 47 ohms, and S11 is minus 29 dB. This is the corresponding FISWAR plot and the corresponding S11 plot and the corresponding impedance plot. So how well does my self-built Moxon antenna perform? To answer this question, two performance tests will be conducted. Performance test A. The Moxon antenna is attached to an end node which is located inside a building and transmit messages which will be received by nearby gateways in my area. In this test, I'm only interested which gateways were able to receive the transmitted sensor data. The test will be repeated using a sleeve dipole antenna. End performance test B. The Moxon antenna is attached to an end node and transmit messages, which will be received by a dedicated gateway 6 meters away. Both devices are indoors. The average RSSI is calculated. The test will be repeated using a half-wave dipole antenna. Performance tests A and B are simple tests and will give me a rough indication how well my antenna performs compared to the dipole antenna. Both tests are conducted indoors, which means the walls reflect the transmitted signals, thus influencing the measurements. Therefore, take the results with a grain of salt. A much better method to tell how your antenna actually performs in the real world, see this procedure. Performance test A. The Moxon antenna performance is compared with a sleeve dipole antenna. More information about sleeve dipole antennas, see tutorial 43. For this test I'm using the end node and antenna C as demonstrated in tutorial 33. More information about this end node, see this tutorial. The end node uses the MCCI LoRaWAN LMIC library. See this GitHub page. The end node uses the following sketch. See this link. Here is the Moxon antenna which is attached to an end node. And here is a sleeve dipole antenna attached to the same end node. I'm using a compass to point the Moxon antenna to different directions. The end node is placed inside the building in front of a window. This is the building circumference. The end node is placed at location A, facing east and south, at an altitude of 11 meters. I have not modified the end node transmission power when using the Moxon antenna. In my area, there are several gateways, and I know that these gateways, which are connected to the Things network, can receive my transmitted data. The Moxon antenna is attached to the end node at location A and transmits data. I have done the same with the sleeve dipole antenna. In both cases, two messages per minute were transmitted. Both log data can be found at this location. One or more gateways were able to receive my transmitted sensor data. See this Google map. The end node transmission power is 14 dBm. This table is created with the help of this log data. These are the gateways which were able to receive my transmitted sensor data. These are the distances between the end node and the gateway. 
and these are the gateway antenna altitudes. The green color means the gateway has received the transmitted sensor data. As you can clearly see, more gateways were able to receive my transmitted sensor data when using the Moxon antenna compared to the sleeve dipole antenna. But to accomplish this, the Moxon antenna was pointed to different directions. Performance test B. Make sure you keep everything in your setup the same when switching from the Moxon antenna to the half-wave dipole antenna. A slight change can impact your measurements. Do not change the height of the end node and the height of the gateway. Do not change the distance between the end node and the gateway. Use the exact same end node and gateway. Use the same coax cables and connectors. During the measurements, I did not stay in the same room. The distance between transmitted and receiver should be greater than four wavelengths, meaning far field region. More information about near and far field, see tutorial 34. Here is the end node with the Moxon antenna. And here is the gateway using antenna C. More information about antenna C, see tutorial 33. The distance between the two antennas is 6 meters. In this picture, you see the Moxon antenna in the foreground, and in the background, you see the gateway. And in reverse, in the foreground, you see the gateway, and in the background, you see the Moxon antenna. Here is the end node with the half wave dipole antenna. And here is the same gateway using antenna C. Again, the distance between the two antennas is 6 meters. In this picture, in the foreground, you see the half wave dipole antenna. And in the background, the same gateway. And in the reverse, in the foreground, the gateway. And in the background, the half wave dipole antenna. This half wave dipole antenna is used in this setup. More information about this half wave dipole antenna. See tutorial 41. These are the antenna parameters of the half wave dipole antenna. The log data can be found at this location. In both cases, one message per minute were transmitted. The average RSSI when using the half wave dipole antenna is minus 26.5 dBm, and the average RSSI when using the Moxon antenna is minus 22.2 dBm. Conclusion. Based on the average RSSI test results and the results from performance test A, the Moxon antenna performs better compared to the sleeve dipole antenna. But the Moxon antenna is a directional antenna. You need to point it to the correct direction. The sleeve dipole antenna is an omnidirectional antenna. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.